25 new dungeons past tier 100. The Abattoir of Zir is almost there, but there is already a problem. Mr. Voody tested a life at BlizzCon and has some words for you. And it gets harder and harder by a significant amount with what sounds like a basically unbeatable last level. An unbeatable final level with rising difficulty of every tier one, two, three, five, and so on. If you're not right now able to just walk through a tier 100 dungeon and not a single damage point can kill you, then we got work to do. And I got three easy steps to improve your build. Now, this is actually very good news for us. Since we have the Tempest Storm, the Gigadot Necromancer, which is unkillable in tier 100 dungeons. And at the same time, there's not enough life on normal minions to actually scale the damage properly. Because you can do 50, 60, 70 million procs that then explode and do 70 million to everyone else like Barbara Hart used to do. Now, knowing that DPS could be an issue, especially when we're looking at bosses, maybe single target damage even. The build doesn't struggle right now in tier 100. It doesn't struggle against Lilith. And yes, there's one enemy to really test your metal against in a tier 100 dungeon to see if your DPS is good. And that would be the Butcher. Even though there's a caveat because the Butcher like pushes you all the time and you can't really dash away to then make proxy bone storms, which you can actually do against normal bosses. That being said though, if you're able to kill the tier 100 Butcher already right now, you're definitely ready for the first 10, 15 levels of the Abattoir of Zir to then be able to do the proper DPS. And we should also not forget to mention that the Abattoir of Zir drops the Tears of Blood Glyph. It has 200 levels, every 50 levels the radius increases, and then for every five core stats purchased within range, you gain 2% multiplicative damage. So that already helps with the damage that we already deal right now, just multiplicatively increasing it. And then grounds 50% bonus to all rare nodes within range. Bonus increases by 10% every 10 levels. Now, with this in mind, in our current strongest version of the Gigadot Necro build, link in the description below, by the way, which rare nodes would we actually want to boost? I mean, this one is armor intelligence. This one is flat damage and intelligence. So boosting this one already with the so boosting this one with the tears of blood will give us flat more damage and more survivability straight away. Because if you look at the send of death, we would be talking about more armor intelligence and then damage to injured enemies. Doesn't really feel good, right? Alternatively, we could do more damage to elites, but that more damage to elites doesn't work against bosses. And the resistance to all elements should matter because we are at the resistance cap. Now in the wither board, you could get more shadow damage. That's actually really good, but that's only shadow damage. And then it's again, shadow resistance. So coming back to why not all damage and damage and armor like right here in the beginning again lastly there is also the bloodbath board which we're actually tapping in for the damage while healthy which would give us damage while fortified but then again also healing received so ain't it chief or we could take bone skill damage and uh, no <laughs> which brings us back to the original solution tears of blood needs to go in here but what else could we do to now scale our damage and that is definitely 21 all your glyphs I mean, some of them, like the Desecrated Ground Glyph, which we've been, for example, playing in the Poop Manta version, scales incredibly high. The same goes for Essence. The higher the Essence, I mean, this is the tier 21 now, that is 20% bonus. It makes such a huge difference. For the Shadow Glyph, to be honest, you just want to have the damage reduction multiplier happening and the actual bonus is good. I and mean, we might at this point even kick the Shadow Glyph, but tiny bonus boost damage is nice. And the same kind of goes for Scorch. I mean, Scorch has the multiplier of 10%. That's nice. And the shadow damage over time is optional. But as long as you have Scorch rolling, that's kind of like already good. Still, though, every point of damage matters. Every little squeeze goes for it. The exploit, too. If you have a max level, it's just the maximum bonus of damage that is possible. Now, on top of that, you can always improve on your gear. I mean, right now, my one, for example, and I'm playing a one for Lucky Hit, has damage to close, slowed, critical strike damage and intelligence. Now that's 21 instead of 31.5. That's only 14.5% more. But considering that my sacrifice, that, that I get 30% multiplicative more critical strike damage, every single point vastly matters. The same goes for my gloves. Currently has shadow damage over time on them and critical strike chance. The critical strike chance, fire. 
but the shadow damage over time considering we're playing right now the max crit damage makes no sense anymore and the same goes for my lucky hit being only at 8.1 percent there is still so much room for improval especially considering that you're not supposed to clear the last level of the abattoir of zir keeping that in mind get out as much as you can and the last stat you really need to look for i mean maximum life obviously but even more important than maximum life is these total armor percentage max rolls this is 26.2 almost perfect three percent missing and on the helmet it is only 24 percent huh that's a stinker right 24 percent now let's compare it to this helmet which has 28 percent but 200 less max life yes that's hurtful the, the 200 but less it stings I, I hate it so much that we have that but four and a half percent more armor and it is also a higher item level. So that's 150 armor plus alone for the item level. And now we are at 11,285. And I'm slotting this helmet, which increases our armor by 150, but also by that bonus 4%. This doesn't seem much to you to think about. But realistically now, every subsequent armor I add boosts so much. For example, my poison resistance is at 70%. To be honest, it's actually at 160%. So I can remove the poison gem and then add 250 armor plus, but it's not just 250 armor plus, right? It, it's double that, double, which is crazy. The same kind of goes for fire resistance, which is currently 195. So again, we're just removing this one and the armor cap is 13,500. That's what you're roughly trying to achieve. And currently we're so close to that, right? Without going for any defense in the Paragon boards because this one is now maxed out for damage, 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 damage. Could squeeze some points away to get even more armor, armor. Here's more armor, armor. And again, every 50 armor gets multiplied by 28, 26, and 26%. The Abertoir of Zero is going to have more damage or equal damage to a tier 100 dungeon, but there's going to be more mobs, more life, more everything. So you're getting pummeled more at the same time. If you're not at the armor cap, you will suffer from that and it will be annoying. Now, sure, you, you have disobedience. Don't forget, there is the aspect of disobedience that will help to boost your armor up, but that also has to run, right? <laughs> so as soon as that's not there, you might be prone to some annoying one hits once again. Just have an eye on that, that it would be great to already have the armor cab without needing disobedience because it also opens you up to take an additional aspect or an additional unique. In my case, I could be playing Solbron instead of this chest, which will reduce my total armor percentage a wee bit, but it would also give me another 40% damage reduction while I have Barium, and even more lucky hit while I have Barium, and I constantly have Barium. But these are the stats you should 100% have an eye for now to get ready for the Abattoir. Lastly, something that you need your Opal Vendor for, because the Opal Vendor can gamble you all kinds of stuff. But what you want is you want to gamble for respective aspects. For example, I want a 20% or 30% Grasping Vein roll. Because that's 3% more Critical Strike damage. Multiplicative on all my Critical Strike damage. And I'm at 700%. So 3% more is not you. It's a lot. And if we're doing 70 million damage, 3% more than 70 million is, is quite something. And there comes my favorite tool, the Opal Gambling Tool, link in the description below. I can type in here, Grasping Veins, which I'm looking for, and it will essentially show you what would be the best item to gamble it on, because every item has a different amount of aspects possible, and here it would be the offhand, the highest chance to potentially get Grasping Veins. Now I'm looking also for the high roll on the Blighted aspect, and it is an offensive aspect as well, and this should be in most cases also offhand. So if I'm looking for the Blighted now as a max roll for 120% multiplicative instead of 113, and then on top of that, the Emil of the Grasping Veins, then I'm going to be sitting here and I'm going to be actually spamming focus after I went for my Hell Tides to hopefully potentially get what I'm looking for to then be at the maximum possible damage. Currently, my Bone Storm is here, for example, at 3060. <laughs> That's it. It will never go higher. And that's why I'm also having a hard time changing these gloves because they have the absolute ultra high roll. And it's quite hard to find perfect gloves because they would have to have critical strike chance, high roll, the attack speed, uh, strength, and then a range to bone spear. 
I mean, like the strength could be Dex, the ranks to Bone Spirit could be Blight, and the attack speed could be, yeah, Lucky Hit Chance. So, like, finding those new gloves is going to be a chore. Now, what do I mean with running through a dungeon without ever dying? Let's go into a Poison Enchanted dungeon. We all know how weird Poison Enchanted scales. If I throw on my Shiznit now and I start zooming through it, well, what we're talking about is you're you're literally not supposed to just just struggle against anything. Like you, you gotta be running through like this and taking the damage, and taking the hits, but continuously never never be able to even die. Now I might actually have to swap on my helmet that actually does have the shielding storm, so I get the twenty thousand barrier. Because right now I can just stand here in the middle and I can get beaten by them, but there's no way that I'll ever just fall to anything. Because I do have my storms going on continuously. And even if my proxy storms are just going on, that's still enough to just get me there, right? And therefore, that's what we're looking for, right? You, you need to be this tanky at least then to, <laughs> to be getting through the abattoir. I mean, we could be talking about probably playing Bone Spear and just standing at the other side of the room and hurling your Bone Spears in. Maybe that's going to be enough. But the problem is that life scales higher, higher, and higher. And when life scales higher and your super amazing crits are just not enough to do it for you anymore, right? Then we're obviously looking at if your crits are not doing enough, if your crits are not like, you know, being your survival. But what has to be your survival then? Well, damage over time and a constant barrier. Because that's the thing with this build. It kind of gets stronger the longer you're doing damage to your enemies. It starts off strong already. I mean, you see how fast we're killing these guys. But we're nowhere getting close to just seeing our 70, 60 million procs. We're mostly going for, you know what, 10, 15 million. That's what we're realistically getting here. But that's because they died too fast. But if we now would have, you know, a bunch of butchers essentially waiting for us, like 20 butchers, that we could scale our shadow damage against and then go for a crazy amount of, you know, lucky hit procs and everything. Well, that's what we're talking about. Then having something that goes absolutely bonkers. And pair that with being able to survive anything in, in a tier 100 dungeon. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're here. We have arrived. We're ready for the abattoir of Zier. Now, if you're worried about boss damage, though, keep in mind that we get the glyph, but not only the glyph. You shouldn't be because you're already doing more than enough, right? You, you can you can just get the boss down and the more lucky hit we actually accrue, taking a lucky hit elixir, for example, the more Ixfeld's procs we're getting. And there is also the way to always build this here more in the direction of the poop mancer or AKA take the offhand with you and then swap over to the blood wave build. But do we really need to swap over to anything when we're just killing tier 100 bosses while staying absolutely unkillable? We're perfect, we're ready. Well, almost ready, need that 21. What are you lacking? What do you still have to improve? If you're looking now for the giga dot build, there you go. That's gonna keep you alive and destroy everything in your path.